Today back then, what happened today in modern history? Let's get most smartest. In 1706, German composer Johann Pachelbel passes away today. In 1776, the first amphibious landing of the United States Marine Corps begins the Battle of Nassau. In 1777, U.S. General George Washington defeats British General Charles Cornwallis at the Battle of Princeton. In 1789, the first whale is harpooned in the Pacific Ocean by the British ship Amelia off the coast of South America. In 1791, the first U.S. International Revenue Act passes taxing distilled spirits and carriages. In 1801, the first U.S. Jewish governor, David Emanuel, takes office in Georgia. In 1805, the Louisiana-Missouri Territory forms. In 1812, the U.S. passes its first foreign aid bill, which aids Venezuelan earthquake victims. In 1813, the Office of the Surgeon General of the U.S. Army is created. In 1820, today saw the passage of the Missouri Compromise, which divided the United States over the issue of slavery for many years to come. It allowed Missouri to join the United States despite slavery still being legal there. In 1823, Stephen F. Austin receives a grant of land in Texas from the government of Mexico. In 1837, Congress increases the U.S. Supreme Court membership from seven to nine. In 1842, the first U.S. child labor law regulating working hours is passed in Massachusetts. In 1825, Florida is admitted as the 27th U.S. state. Also in 1845, for the first time, the U.S. Senate overrides a presidential veto. In 1847, inventor Alexander Graham Bell is born. Also in 1847, the U.S. Post Office Department is authorized to issue postage stamps. In 1849, the Territory of Minnesota organizes. In 1855, the U.S. Congress approves $30,000 to test camels for military use. In 1861, Delaware votes to not secede from the United States. In 1863, the U.S. Congress authorizes a track width of 4 feet 8.5 inches for the Union Pacific Railroad. I wonder why Congress had to decide that. Also in 1863, President Abraham Lincoln approves the charter for the National Academy of Sciences. Also in 1863, the Idaho Territory forms. In 1865, today saw the opening of the Hong Kong and Shanghai Banking Corporation, the founding member of the HSBC. Get it? Hong Kong, Shanghai Banking Corporation, HSBC. Also in 1865, the U.S. Bureau of Refugees, Freedmen, and Abandoned Lands is established by Abraham Lincoln to help destitute freed blacks. In 1869, the University of South Carolina opens to all races. In 1870, construction of the Brooklyn Bridge begins. In 1873, the U.S. Congress enacts the Comstock Law, making it illegal to send any obscene, lewd, or lascivious books through the U.S. mail. In 1875, Georges Bizet's opera Carmen receives its premiere at the Opera Comique in Paris. Also in 1875, the first ever organized indoor game of ice hockey is played in Montreal, Canada. In 1879, the first female lawyer is heard by the U.S. Supreme Court today. In 1887, Anne Sullivan begins teaching six-year-old blind deaf Helen Keller. In 1888, the largest telescope in the world at that time, at the Lick Observatory, is used for the first time. In 1891, the U.S. Congress creates the Courts of Appeal. In 1899, George Dewey becomes the first person in the U.S. to hold the rank of Admiral of the Navy. In 1900, the U.S. Steel Corporation organizes. In 1903, North Carolina becomes the first state requiring registration of nurses. Probably a good idea. In 1904, Germany's Kaiser Wilhelm II is the first person to make a sound recording of a political document. He used Thomas Edison's phonograph cylinder. In 1910, J.D. Rockefeller Jr. announces his retirement from managing his businesses so that he can devote all his time to philanthropy. In 1911, the original blonde bombshell, American actress Jean Harlow, was born. Also in 1911, the first U.S. federal cemetery with Union and Confederate graves 
opens in Missouri. In 1917, Mexico and the U.S. renew diplomatic relations. In 1920, the Montreal Canadiens score an NHL record 16 goals, beating the Quebec Bulldogs. In 1921, Toronto's Dr. Banning and Dr. Best announced the discovery of insulin. In 1923, the first issue of Time magazine was published. In 1925, Benito Mussolini announces he is taking dictatorial powers over Italy. In 1931, by an act of Congress, the Star-Spangled Banner was officially adopted as the national anthem of the United States. Also in 1931, Cab Calloway records Minnie Moocher, and it becomes jazz's first million seller. In 1932, martial law is declared in Honduras to stop a revolt by banana workers who were fired by the United Fruit Company. In 1933, Minnie D. Craig becomes the first woman to be elected as Speaker of the North Dakota House of Representatives, which also makes her the first woman to hold a Speaker position in the United States. Also in 1933, Mount Rushmore is dedicated. In 1934, in Crown Point, Indiana, bank robber John Dillinger made a daring escape from prison. In 1938, the world's fastest steam locomotive is built. It is called the Mallard, and it could reach 100 miles per hour. Also in 1938, oil is discovered in Saudi Arabia, and the rest is history. In 1942, 10 Japanese warplanes raid the town of Broome, Western Australia, killing more than 100 people. In 1943, in London, England, 173 people are crushed to death while trying to enter an air raid shelter at Bethnal Green Tube Station. Also in 1943, Australian and American Air Forces devastate a Japanese Navy convoy in the Battle of the Bismarck Sea. In 1944, top U.S. ace Major Greg Pappy Boyington is shot down in his Voight F4U Corsair. Do you remember the TV series starring Robert Conrad? In 1945, Admiral Chester W. Nimitz is placed in command of all U.S. naval forces in preparation for planned assaults against Iwo Jima and Okinawa in Japan. Also in 1945, American and Filipino troops recapture Manila in the Philippines. In 1947, proceedings of the U.S. Congress are televised for the first time. In 1950, the National American Football League reverts back to calling itself the NFL after three months. In 1951, Jackie Brenston and Ike Turner record Rocket 88, which is often called the first rock and roll record. In 1953, the Boston Braves, who own the Milwaukee minor league franchise, block the St. Louis Browns' attempt to move their franchise to Milwaukee. In 1956, Heartbreak Hotel becomes Elvis Presley's first Billboard Top 10 hit. In 1958, Nouriaz Saeed becomes the Prime Minister of Iraq for the 14th time. In 1959, Alaska is admitted as the 49th U.S. state. Also in 1959, Pioneer 4 is launched and becomes the first U.S. probe to enter solar orbit. And in 1959 as well, the San Francisco Giants renamed their stadium Candlestick Park. In 1962, Pope John XXIII excommunicates Fidel Castro. I'm not sure that he cared. In 1965, My Girl by The Temptations reaches number one. In 1966, Canadian-American rock band Buffalo Springfield forms. In 1972, sculpted figures of Jefferson Davis, Robert E. Lee, and Stonewall Jackson are completed at Stone Mountain, Georgia. In 1974, a Turkish Airlines DC-10 crashes near Paris, France, killing all 345 people on board. In 1975, the first People's Choice Awards air. John Wayne and Barbara Streisand win for motion pictures and Alan Alda, Telly Savalas, and Mary Tyler Moore win for television. In 1977, Irish singer-songwriter Ronan Keating was born. In 1980, after a long and illustrious career, the USS Nautilus is decommissioned. In 1981, the New York Islanders and the Edmonton Oilers play to an 8-8 eight -to -eight tie. In 1983, the Pittsburgh Steelers quarterback Terry Bradshaw is admitted to the hospital for surgery to repair his throwing arm. He uses the alias Tom Brady. Prophetic or what? In 1985, the first episode of the sitcom Moonlighting airs on television. 
Also in 1985, a magnitude 8.3 earthquake struck the Valparaiso region of Chile, killing 177 and leaving nearly a million people homeless. In 1986, the third studio album by Metallica, called Master of Puppets, is released. In 1987, American actor and dancer Danny Kay passes away. In 1991, Los Angeles police officers are videotaped beating Rodney King. In 1992, U.S. President George H.W. Bush apologizes for raising taxes after pledging not to. It's called a campaign promise. Unfortunately, it means nothing. In 1993, Damn Yankees opens at the Marquee Theater in New York City for 510 performances. In 1996, the Motorola StarTac, the first flip phone, goes on sale. In 1997, China announces it will spend the equivalent of $27.7 billion to fight erosion and pollution in the Yangtze River and Yellow River Valleys. Also in 1997, Sky Tower in downtown Auckland, New Zealand opens after two and a half years of construction. In 1999, the Mars Polar Lander is launched. In 2004, Belgian brewer Interbrew and Brazilian rival Ambev agree to merge in an $11.2 billion deal that forms InBev, the world's largest brewer. In 2005, adventurer Steve Fawcett flew around the world without refueling in 67 hours. He landed in Kansas today. Also in 2005, 50 Cent releases his album The Massacre, which becomes the Billboard Album of the Year. In 2010, Alice in Wonderland, directed by Tim Burton and starring Johnny Depp premieres. It had to have been a Razzie winner as well. In 2013, a two-year-old U.S. girl becomes the first child born with HIV to be cured. In 2017, the mass grave of 800 children and infants is confirmed at a former Catholic care home in Ireland. In 2018, Roger Bannister, the first athlete to run a mile in less than four minutes, died at age 88. Also in 2018, the Emoji Movie is named Worst Film in 2017 at the Razzie Awards. In 2019, SpaceX's Dragon capsule successfully docks with the International Space Station during its demonstration run. In 2020, Iran releases 54,000 people from prison to avoid spread of COVID-19. Also in 2020, the United Kingdom had its wettest February since records began in 1862, 237% above average. In 2021, U.S. President Joe Biden criticizes the lifting of COVID-19 restrictions by Texas and Mississippi as Neanderthal thinking. And lastly, in 2021, Sarah Everard is kidnapped, raped, and murdered by a United Kingdom policeman after being arrested under false pretenses in London. Well, that was March 3rd. Lots of fun things happened today. I'd really appreciate it if you would thumbs up, comment, and subscribe to my channel. Thanks for stopping by.